the recording is on now we'll continue our discussion about banach contraction mapping theorem that we were doing in the next class we were talking about in the next class so if i remember let me just briefly recall what the result was so i have x is a closed set in rn uh, t is a contraction map over this set capital x and if i consider the sequence xk plus 1 equals to txk so i'm iteratively starting from some initial point within the set x and i'm applying t again and again uh, then i have three result first is xk converges to so xk has a limit point x bar let's denote it by x bar x bar is a fixed point of t and in fact x bar is the unique fixed point of t so there are no other fixed point of t within that set capital x and what that implies is no matter where you start in the set capital x if you iteratively apply t uh, the sequence is eventually going to converge to this unique fixed point of t within that set capital x so that was our banach contraction mapping theorem what we are going to talk about today is how do we apply this theorem in the context of uh, proving convergence of optimization algorithms so at this point of time is there any question on the contraction mapping theorem any clarification on the previous on the last lecture or or any other question about contraction mapping theorem before i jump on to the application okay all right so let's say i have the so i'm going to change the notation right now so let's say y is a subset of r n and uh, h is a map from y to y so here is my set y here is a point let me call it y star and i know that h of y star equals to y star so y star is a fixed point of h and i'm going to make the second assumption is that the spectral radius of the gradient of h at y star is strictly less than 1 okay so this is the spectral radius a uh, gradient of h is going to be a, a gradient of h is going to be a matrix in n cross n so gradient of h at y star is a matrix in r n cross n and i'm looking at the spectral radius of this matrix and it's strictly less than 1 then i can show there exist a neighborhood of y star so let me denote this neighborhood by n such that h from n to n is a contraction map uh should i use n let me use y actually so this y is actually a neighborhood of maybe i should change the definition h is a function from rn to rn h has a fixed point y star and the spectral radius of the gradient of h at y star is less than 1 yeah okay okay so so i have this y star and i know that y star is a fixed point of h and i also know that the spectral radius of the gradient at this y star is less than 1 i can come up with a neighborhood y around this y star such that h is a contraction map in that neighborhood
This would immediately imply that iterative application of H would, um, would make the sequence converge to Y star because of the contraction mapping theorem. This is also one of the questions in the assignment. Um, so I'm just giving you the solution to like a first part of the assignment in this class uh, so that you can fill in the rest of the stuff later on. Okay. How would we go about proving it? So what would be a possible approach to prove this result? So the two questions we need to answer. So question one is, what is the norm on Y? Because uh, contraction mapping is dependent on the norm you pick on the space. So what should the space, what should the norm be on the space Y? So that's question number one. And question number two is, uh, what is the contraction coefficient? Okay. How, what do you think? How should we go about establishing this statement? So let's think about So I pick two points around Y star, Y1 and Y2. And I can use the mean value theorem to say that this is equal to gradient H of Y tilde Y1 minus Y2. <clears throat> okay, this is my equation one. What else? What else do we know? Let us make a minor assumption here. So assume that gradient H of Y star is diagonalizable. And I'm going to write gradient H of Y star equals to U D U inverse. So D is the uh, diagonal matrix with eigenvalues as its diagonal entries and U is the collection of eigenvectors of the gradient. So what do we know from midterm? So we know the following gradient H of Y star multiplied by Y1 minus Y2 norm. Okay, let me put the norm first. So if I define the norm equals to U inverse, the vector Can everyone hear me fine? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let me put use this norm, which is the uh, norm of y equals to norm of u inverse y, the one norm of u inverse y. 
Okay, you can pick any p norm, but let's just pick one norm of u inverse y. So if I pick this norm, then I know that norm of gradient h y star times y1 minus y2 is less than equal to rho of gradient h y star norm of y1 minus y2. Right, we know this from our midterm. This is the problem 1b of midterm. Okay, is anyone else having the screen freeze? Yeah, I was just about to ask the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, your screen keeps freezing uh, w after you write something. It doesn't show up, but we can still hear your voice. Uh, oh, right. But like right now, what you have written, like it just popped up right now. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, so I'm getting a internet connection problem right now, but it seems like uh, you know, at this point of time, I don't know what else I can do about the internet connection, but I did receive a pop-up message on my screen that there is a problem with my internet connection. Um, okay. Yeah. Hopefully the recording will be better than, uh, better than what you may be seeing right now on the screen. Yeah. Okay. So, so in the midterm, we have learned this, uh, uh, this inequality, which is that the gradient of H of Y star times Y1 minus Y2 is less than the spectral radius multiplied by the norm of Y1 minus Y2. So this is the norm that I'm using here. Okay. Now, now, now let's apply this idea to equation number one. So now I have h of y1 minus h of y2 norm is equal to u inverse gradient of h of y tilde y1 minus y2 1 u inverse gradient of h y tilde u u inverse y1 minus y2, one norm. Okay, so so far I have inequality all over the place. Here, I'm going to use the matrix norm. So this is matrix norm Okay. So now what I have is, I have the norm of H1, HY1 minus HY2 is less than equal to some matrix norm times this is equal to norm of Y1 minus Y2. So, what do we know so far? So we know the following thing. We know that the norm of U inverse gradient H Y star 
u one norm is equal to rho of gradient h y star. So we know this. Let me actually write what matrix norm, one norm of a matrix is. It's max over all the columns. This is maximum absolute column sum. So you look at the columns of matrix A, um, you sum it up, you take the absolute value, you sum it up, and then you take the maximum over all possible columns of the matrix A. So that's the one norm of matrix A. And we know uh, from our, uh, you know, midterm one solution that U inverse gradient of H U one norm is equal to the, uh, the spectral radius of the matrix gradient of H at Y star. Okay. But here we don't really have the gradient of H at Y star. I have gradient of H at Y tilde. So what do you think we can do to make sure that this remains less than one? That's what we need to prove. We just have to show that I can pick a neighborhood so that this is less than one. This matrix norm of this big matrix is less than one. What do you think we can invoke to say that such a neighborhood Y exists, capital Y exists? Hopefully by now you, you are seeing all these equations on the screen. Um, so I'll just pause here for a couple of minutes to let you think and come up with an answer to the following question. I know that this spectral radius is less than one. How can I argue that I can pick a neighborhood of Y star such that this, this uh, one norm of this U inverse gradient of H U is also less than one. This would be my beta. Let me give you a hint. Um, we are going to be, I mean, we have always been assuming that H is infinitely differentiable. So just assume that, you know, because it's differentiable, it's also continuous. Like all the derivatives are going to be continuous. Any thoughts? Once again, the question is, I know that the spectral radius of uh, gradient of H at Y star is less than one. How can I argue that beta is less than one in the neighborhood of Y star?
no thoughts okay so let's uh, let's let's argue this out so i know that the one norm of this matrix is equal to the spectral radius which is strictly less than 1 i also know that one norm of the matrix by looking at this expression i know that the one norm of the matrix is a continuous function of the entries in the matrix so a1 is continuous in aij so the aijs are entries of the matrix so what that implies is if i look at the one norm of u inverse gradient of h y tilde u it's actually a continuous function of y tilde so this implies u inverse gradient of h y u 1 is continuous in y tilde now this is equal to this is strictly less than 1 at y star so there exist oh i should put y tilde here this is the most important conclusion there exist y a neighborhood y of y star such that norm 1 is less than 1 But of course, your beta has to be larger than rho of gradient of h y star. Or beta Okay, so this would imply that h of y1 minus h of y2 norm is less than or equal to beta y1 minus y2. For all y1, y2 in capital Y. This is my y star, this is my y, this is y1, this is y2, this is the line joining y1 and y2, y tilde lies on this particular line and we know that after doing all this calculation we know that the norm of H1, hy1 and hy2 is bounded from above by beta times the norm of y1 minus y2 where beta is given by this expression this is the expression for beta and you can pick the neighborhood uh, y in such a way that beta is less than one So overall, uh, what we have done is 
establish the following result that if y star is a fixed point of h and the spectral radius of the gradient of h at y star is less than one, then I can find a neighborhood of y star, which would be small, it could be a small neighborhood, it could be a large neighborhood that depends on how much the spectral, how much the eigenvalues of gradient of h varies over the space around y star. So I can find a neighborhood of y star, which we we'll denote by capital Y, such that H is a contraction map within that neighborhood. Okay, in the process, we have identified the norm. Uh, and under this norm, this is a contraction map. And we have also identified the contraction coefficient and we have realized that we could, um, uh, we could pick a large neighborhood, but the contraction coefficient will also be large. We can pick a smaller neighborhood and the contraction coefficient will also be small, appropriately small. So it can't be made as small as zero, but uh, it will be in the vicinity of the spectral radius of gradient of H at Y star. Are there any questions on this result? So I've received a couple of notifications about my internet connection being unstable. So what I'm going to do is try to connect it to a different network. And hopefully that may solve the problem. Okay, so I'm now connected to a different uh, network. Is this better? If I scroll, are you able to follow the screen? It's hard to say. Sometimes it cuts in and out, sometimes it doesn't. So I... we won't really know until you start um, okay. writing again. Okay, okay, thanks for letting me know. I mean, unfortunately, right now, I don't quite know why the internet is not working as intended. Um, usually it works and I've never had a problem before. All right, so let's, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this argument to the new algorithm Lagrangian, Lagrange, Lagrangian method that we had discussed earlier. So here is the method. So I have xk plus one equals to xk minus alpha lambda k plus one equals to alpha hxk. So let's say I come up with this algorithm. Um, and I want to show that this, uh, this algorithm converges to x star lambda star. So let me define y as x cross lambda or just let me write it as y equals to x comma lambda no. okay and my h of y is actually x minus or identity minus alpha, the gradient of x of L and then h minus h, this is evaluated at y.
So how do we know whether this is a contraction map or not around X star and Lambda star? Well, the way to show that this is a contraction map is to show that gradient of H at Y star, the spectral radius is going to be less than one. So what's the gradient of H at Y star? It's identity minus alpha this evaluated at Y star. So this is the usual identity matrix. This is the step size alpha that we are picking. This is the second derivative of the Lagrangian, uh, second derivative with respect to X. This is gradient of H, this is minus gradient of H transpose, this is zero. Now it turns out that if you have a matrix of the type Q, uh, H is already used, B. Okay, I'm seeing that my internet connection is still unstable. B, B transpose zero. So if Q is positive definite, let's say this is my matrix A. So if Q is positive definite and B is full rank, then eigenvalues of A have positive real part. Okay, this is a result from linear algebra. And it's not difficult to prove, but it takes some amount of time to prove it. Okay, so let's uh, talk about what we are trying to do here again. Let's recap. So this is the method that someone, you know, God told me that this is a method that's a cool method for solving constrained optimization problem. Uh, I still need to prove that this has the convergence property that we need, uh, which means that this converges to X star lambda star, which is satisfies the first order necessary conditions for optimality. So in order to prove that result, what I need to do is show that the spectral radius of H at Y star is strictly less than one. Okay, but remember that alpha is something that I need to pick because alpha is the step size, I get to pick step size. Um, so I probably can pick, so I, I just have to figure out if, if I can pick a step size alpha such that the spectral radius is less than one. So I looked at the expression for gradient of H at Y star, turns out that it has a special structure where it's like a block of four matrices. And after doing some linear algebra research, I realized that if Q is greater than zero, so Q is positive definite, and B is a full rank matrix, then eigenvalues of A, matrix A, which is given by Q, B minus B transpose zero, uh, uh, the eigenvalues of such a matrix will have positive real part. That doesn't yet solve the problem because it has positive real part, but how do I know that I minus alpha times this matrix will have spectral radius less than one for some value of alpha greater than zero. Uh, 